Hi everyone, my name is Mandar Ghokle. I'm a product manager for Aruba UXI and in this video we are going to look at path analysis. So let's first look at how to configure path analysis test on the UXI dashboard. So when you see the UXI dashboard open, you will see the new bubble here which says path analysis on the top side and once you click on it, it will give you all the introduction for path analysis, what it is, what are the main components of it like control panel, node map, timeline and then info panel as well and then it will prompt you to configure the first path analysis test. So you can go to service and app test and you can either create path analysis test for your existing test like for example I have the Salesforce, I can create one uh, for the Salesforce. Uh, so if I click on the salesforce.com it will give me an option to create path analysis test for all the tests which are underneath it or I can simply turn on the toggle for ICMP or TCP 443 or AT as well uh, by putting this toggle on and off. Also, I can not only create path analysis test for existing test that I have but I can also create a new path analysis test for something which is like a newly installed web server that I have. Alright, so now that we have looked at how to configure a test Let's see how to navigate to the path analysis view. So let me open one of my UXI dashboard which is already pre-configured with several path analysis tests. So you can select your groups that you have which is hierarchical groups for the path analysis view or you can select individual sensors so that you can actually drill down to the sensor level and see the paths for that particular sensor. Uh, you can also filter the view depending on the selection that you have for destinations or the path analysis test is enabled for that particular destination or services and then we have a time period selection where you can select time for that historical paths. We also have a timeline to actually go granular level of time selections like if you use up arrow sorry uh, left hand side arrows or right hand side arrows you can actually move the slider as well uh, to get, get to the specific time for that particular path, for that particular destination. Then we have sort and filter where you can actually sort the entire view according to your desired selection. So right now by default it's sorted uh, highest to lowest RTT values. So all the highest RTT values for that particular service is at the top and then uh, the lowest will be at the bottom and we have the pagination so you can actually go to page number two, page three, uh, from the top right and you can see all the paths from all of your sensors as well. Uh, you can easily filter or sort using different levels like we have a packet loss sorting, we have a jitter, number of hops, source and destination based sorting as well or you can also sort it using low to high. Then we have a sliders for hop range, RTT, jitter and then packet loss which is actually coming from the packet test that we have. Then let's say if I want to compare paths for wireless network versus wired network. I can easily make selection here um, where I have wired versus wireless all my networks here. I can also select depending on the ICMP and TCP paths that I have. Uh, if I have iPerf I can also see UDP as well in the protocol. Uh, then the ports which is like TCP port and the UDP port that you have path analysis enabled for uh, you can also filter for the autonomous system numbers uh, which are actually uh, along the path for that particular service. Uh, you can also filter for the IP prefixes along the path. So you can filter the view depending on all this sort and filter. Then we have grouping option. So grouping is very interesting because it helps you build a desired view because sometimes this path will get messier and it will be like so many number of nodes along the path. So you can actually move the slider which is our hop slider. So let's say right now it's two from the source and two from the destination. So I can see two hops from the source which is my sensor and then two hops from my destination which is my service. But let's say if I want to see more paths right so I can add more nodes actually along the path so I can move the slider from the destination as 4 so now instead of 2 I can see 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes from the right hand side so you can actually move the slider as well 
or we have this collapse hops which are like 12 collapse hops in between so you can actually uh, click on it to expand it and the path will get bigger and bigger because now you can see all the nodes along the path and if you hover over it it will display round trip time the maximum round trip time which is actually collected within that five minute interval dscp value which is help you for qos the host name as number for that node prefix and the public IP address for that particular node. All right, then we have grouping based on source and groups. So if I select group, then this sensors names will get merged to the hierarchical groups that I have. So I have APJ, retail, hotel lobby as my source. So that's how it changed. Then I can change the intermediate nodes to display not IP address, but let's say I want to see prefixes. So I can select prefix and this intermediate nodes will get converged to the prefixes, which is 400 slash 9 or 64150200 slash 13. Uh, so let me put it back to IP address and uh, the destination as well. I can now see the target host. URL, which is our service and the IP address. But let's say if I just want to see the target host name or the service, I can easily toggle it. So if I hit apply for target host, it will no longer display IP address, but all the IP addresses gets converged to open AI service name or target host name. And then we have a help here. So you would see all the iconography, what is what in this path analysis view. Uh, then you can easily click on the help article as well. We have the node info panel or you can say the path info metric panel where you can actually select any node or any particular source or destination or intermediate node and you can get node metrics and the path metrics. And this is interesting while troubleshooting because when you're troubleshooting high latency paths, you would see round trip time not only for average duration, but for the maximum round trip time collected along the path from that particular London group, which has two sensors. Uh, then it will give you all the summary of it. So now I selected one source, which is London, then one destination, which is OpenAI, one unique route it highlighted with average hops, which are 11, uh, and the maximum hops are 11, and then Round trip time for that particular duration was uh, 14 or 1 milliseconds um, average and then maximum was 1 because of course there is only one unique route selected. I can also find and select. So let's say if I just want to see APJ regional routing, I can select this APJ and then it will get highlighted in the path if you see here and then I can see here that it's already opened the info panel but now with the apj regional hop uh, or node info or path metrics so it's giving me three sensors are in apj one destination which is open ai because i filter for open ai three unique routes with packet loss and jitter values and number of hops and the entire round trip time also the good news is we can also isolate the path so you can isolate the path uh, for that APJ regional routing and you can do undo which is like it will go back to the original selection or you can reset it to like the beginning of what you have selected. So yeah this is how you know you can navigate to path analysis view. Let's take a look at use cases of path analysis. In this dashboard I have my sensor testing one of my network of wireless and it's actually running arubanetworks.com homepage website testing and it is giving me latency of 4 milliseconds around 1840 but it suddenly spiked around 1900 to 137 which is like 10x spike right and now i want to identify what exactly happened during this time because it spiked in the latency value right so now i can actually use my path analysis to showcase this use case so let's see how you can identify it so first i filter for my sensor with this aruba networks.com for that particular duration which is 1830 to 1930 just to see before and after path 
And what I observed is around 1855 to 1900, just before this huge spike happened, the sensor is reaching out to Aruba networks with 8 milliseconds of RTT, which is okay because at that time we got flat latency of 4 milliseconds. And when I resolve this 104 IP, which is actually in South Korea, uh, because my sensor is on South Korea, so that actually explains why I get lower latency, right? Because sensor and my Aruba Networks website resolution is on the same continent. But then when I actually go to the higher latency path where it was resolving now to 72 IP, which is a different IP than the previous one with the highest RTT, which is 148 milliseconds now. And in order to see where exactly this 72 IP is located, I used this Geomax mine and I saw that it's in LA, California. So that's why I'm getting this spike here because it's now resolving to the, you know, uh, different IP and it's not in the same region and that's why it's spiking to 137 milliseconds. So this is just one example of use case that you can uh, actually troubleshoot using path analysis, but there are many more. So feel free to check out our use case help article as well. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening in and I'll see you into the next video.